Welcome. It is 7 o'clock on the dot here at uh, the Ormond Beach City Commission Chambers. It's February 6, 2024, and uh, I uh, want to introduce the folks who are sitting up in front of you, uh, and I hope you felt welcomed when you came in tonight. We have uh, Deputy Public Works Director Kevin Gray and Deputy Fire Chief Nate Cordier, who served as our greeters this evening. Uh, they would have directed you to a card if you need one to speak, so feel free to, to grab that and get it to the clerk if you still would like to speak on any item. And uh, as far as the folks sitting up in front of you, to my right is Recording Secretary Taylor Lockhart. Next is City Clerk Susan Dodderis. Commissioner from Zone 1, Lori Tolland. Good evening, everyone. Commissioner from Zone 2, Travis Sargent. Good evening, everyone. To my left, uh, your right, Commissioner from Zone 3, Susan Persis. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Our Deputy Mayor and Zone 4, Commissioner Harold Briley. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. City Manager Joyce Shanahan, Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley, and uh, Deputy City Attorney Ann Margaret Emery. Way to my left and way to your right are our chiefs, uh, Police Chief Jesse Godfrey and Fire Chief Howard Bailey. For those of you listening online, I'm Mayor Bill Partington, and uh, at this time I'd ask you to silence your cell phones uh, and rise for the invocation given by Mike Petrick from Harbor Baptist Church, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you on this cool evening, but grateful to be able to do city business. Uh, pray, God, that you'd have your, your watchful eye and caring hand upon all that's done today. Lord, I pray that all things we've done, uh, as the scripture says, decently and in order, and it would give a good reflection of the, the city and the good people that are here today. Lord, I pray that all things done as well will be a uh, uh, helpful to whomever it is for. Lord, I pray for everything to be understood well and communicated well. And so with all these things, we just want to give you thanks. We come before you knowing we are yours. We thank God for these servants, these uh, uh, whether elected uh, officials or employed officials, um, our folks that fight crime, our folks that fight fires. Lord, in every way, we just thank you for them and their, and their great service to this community. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. At this time, uh, we have a very special presentation and I want to ask our city clerk Susan Dodderis to come forward along with Gwen Pierce. Uh, she, Gwen is Satellite Beaches City Clerk and the Central East District Director with the Florida Association of City Clerk. Uh, she'll be presenting Susan with her official pen from the International Institute of Municipal Clerks for achieving her certified municipal clerk designation. Thank Good you evening. very much, Mayor. Um, you pretty much said everything, though. <laughs> um, good evening, Mayor Partington and members of the commission and city manager and staff um, and attendees today. Um, thank you so much for having us um, here this evening. My name is Gwen Pierce. I'm the Central East District Director for the Florida Association of City Clerks, FACC. Um, joined with me is Patricia Burke. She is our president-elect from the town of, uh, she's the town clerk manager of the town of Palm Shores. Um, as Mayor said, I'm the city clerk for the city of Satellite Beach, just a little bit of south, south of here. Um, so it's with great pleasure that we're here with this evening celebrating your clerk, Susan Daughters, on her accomplishment of um, achieving her certified municipal clerk designation. Um, the Institute of, uh, International Institute of Municipal Clerks, the IMC, and the Florida Association of City Clerks, its partner, uh, the FACC are professional associations that promote um, continuing education and certification through university and college-based institutes. So to achieve the CMC designation, Susan has gone through and completed the Municipal Clerks Institute program 
which is conducted by the John Scott Daly uh, Florida Institute of Government from Florida State University in Tallahassee. Um, this program provides 120 hours of in-depth coursework in managerial and leadership skills and technical training needed to deal with changes taking place in government today. The program aids municipal clerks in improving job performance and recognizes the profession of the municipal clerk's um, office. In addition to completion of the uh, institute program or a bachelor's degree in public administration, clerks must exhibit responsible experience in local government and participate in conferences, um, meetings, and educational sem seminars in order to earn the CMC designation. Um, your city clerk is now part of an elite group of professionals in local government, a group she could not have become a part of without your commitment to support her efforts. So on behalf of the FACC President, Angie Guy, the Board of Directors and its members, I'm, I'm extending our sincerest congratulations to Susan Dodderus, City Clerk of the City of Woman Beach on her impressive accomplishment of becoming one of the newest certified municipal clerks. We're very proud of you. Thank you for coming up. We recognized Susan at the last meeting as well, but to have you here for the official pinning ceremony was, was wonderful. Thank you. Appreciate you. And congratulations, Susan. All right. Um, before we do audience remarks, I just wanted to read a brief statement regarding the county council meeting this morning and their decision on the, the fuel farm. I want folks to know, as, as mayor of Ormond Beach, uh, I want to reaffirm our city's steadfast dedication to the safety and well-being of our citizens. This commitment stands firm against the presence of a fuel farm, even in light of the county's recent decision against implementing a development moratorium in the I-2 zoning district. I think we're all a little surprised by that. Uh, the vote against the moratorium does not diminish the importance of reassessing and modernizing our zoning and development plans to align with the needs of both the county and Ormond Beach. Balancing economic growth with uh, sustainability and welfare of our community is a complex issue, but uh, we maintain that development should never compromise our residents' health and safety. Our immediate concerns were voiced so eloquently today at the Volusia County meeting by our amazing and engaged Ormond Beach citizens. I was so proud of all the points that they made, uh, so impressed. I mean, they, they covered everything. Um, and I want them to know our city stands in solidarity with them, committed to ensuring their voices lead to meaningful action. Uh, though the moratorium was not enacted, uh, the moratorium made so much sense the county staff had laid it out for the entire council it would have worked so well uh, but yet a majority of the council chose not to impose that so uh, I want our residents to know our advocacy <clears throat> the entire commissions uh, it is my belief although I haven't we haven't been able to talk about it since this morning because uh, we haven't seen each other and we wouldn't be allowed to uh, because of sunshine anyway, but uh, I believe our advocacy as a commission on our, every resident's behalf and on behalf of the entire city will absolutely continue. So I'll leave that uh, there as my official statement and we will go to audience remarks and uh, our first speaker tonight is a gentleman who uh, was at the meeting today, our representative on the county council. He did vote for the moratorium. I think he saw the common sense in it. I, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. But uh, for audience remarks, first up, uh, he's already had a long day, but is Troy Councilman Troy Kent.
Honorable Mayor Partington and Honorable Commissioners Tolland, Sargent, Persis, and Briley, I come to you this evening not in the capacity as County Councilman Troy Kent. I'm, I'm coming before you as resident Troy Kent, by the way, 130 Magnolia Drive, Ormond Beach, 32176. I come really with two things to tell you. I want to first say thank you. I want to thank the residents of Mormon Beach, and I want to thank this elected body. You have shown up, you have spoken up, you presented clear and concise facts to the council. And um, Commissioner Briley, I know you were there in spirit. And Commissioner Sargent, thank you for showing up. Commissioner Persis, your comments were spot on. Commissioner Tolland as well, your comments were eloquent and right there. Mayor, I gotta tell you, I thought you knocked it out of the park with, with your comments. And I'm shocked that the moratorium didn't pass at the second reading. So the first thing I wanted to say was thank you to you and the residents of Ormond Beach. The second thing I want to tell you is I'm not giving up and I don't want you to give up and I don't want our city and the rest of I, I feel like the entire county is behind us and supports us. So I just implore you to continue the good fight. Don't give up. Um, and I, 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 I know that positive things can continue to happen in Volusia County. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Next, we have Debbie Crook Forrester, Ormond Strong. Good evening, Debbie Crook Forrester, um, Ormond Beach, of course. T tonight, I'm here representing Volusia County Stands with Israel. We're holding our first uh, ceremony and remembrance walk Sunday, February 18th at 3 p.m. This is a peaceful, again, emphasis on peaceful, ceremony followed by a walk supporting Israel and remembering the 132 hostages still held in cap captivity for the past 122 days who must be brought home. If you can't walk, you can still join us for the ceremony. There are three ways to sign up. Facebook under um, Volusia County Stands with Israel. Uh, email volusia 4 israel at gmail.com, um, text 386-566-3685. I gave each of you a flyer that has the location on it, but I asked you not to publish the um, flyer with the location because for uh, security purposes, they have to go through um, these three ways and they'll get the, the location uh, right before the event to keep it secure for everybody. Um, I want to thank you for your time and for everything you do for our uh, city and everybody for our county. I was at that uh, meeting earlier, and I don't envy your job. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Debbie. Next is Jerry Shepard. My name is Jerry Shepard. On behalf of Mark Simmons and Simmons Aviation LLC based at uh, the Ormond Beach Municipal Airport, um, I currently live at 84 Hidden Cove in Flagler Beach. Good evening and thank you, Mayor and Commission members for this opportunity to address the Commission tonight. The purpose of my address is twofold. One, um, to request a future opportunity to be placed on the agenda to address this body with regards to aerial banner tow operations out of the airport that is currently a banned event since the mid 80s. Um, and then also I'm gonna provide a quick update on what it is that Simmons Aviation does. A uh, little background, um, Simmons Aviation was established in 2000 and we've had a hangar there since uh, uh, 2019. Um, additionally, Mark Simmons and Simmons Aviation uh, has a nationally recognized banner towing operation. Then um, they operate out of the Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New York shorelines during the summer months, um, all of which um, they do with FAA-approved aircraft and, and the pilots that are trained for that. Um, locally, um, 
with this hangar that uh, Mark has. He's currently providing flight training for both single and multi-engine aircraft um, wannabe pilots, if you would, for the future. Um, yeah, additionally, thousands of gallons of gas has been purchased, you know, to operate these aircraft. So he does bring money into the uh, into the airport environment as well. Uh, safety is first and foremost in everything that is done with uh, uh, Simmons Aviation. Uh, I personally have been flying for over 40 years, and I wouldn't be a part of this organization if you know that wasn't being adhered to. Um, what uh, we can provide for the community is the continued uh, flight training. But what we'd like to be able to do is an opportunity to uh, um, expand and do banner operations like you see coming out of uh, Massey Air Ranch and so forth. Um, so again, I appreciate the opportunity if we can be placed on future agendas uh, for my boss to come in and kind of outline what the request would be. That is all, unless Thank you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Jerry Gennaro. Good evening, everyone. I stand before you, my name is Jerry Gennaro, and I stand before you as Ormond Main Street's chairman of the Cason Park City Docks Committee. Tonight, I bring forth a proposal that could breathe new life into our city docks. I request on behalf, behalf of the Ormond Street Board of Directors, the commission to consider a six month suspension of the city ordinance restricting overnight docking at Cason Park. Back in 2020, when the docks were completed, operating hours were aligned with those of other city parks, inadvertently limiting their use. We believe this decision has significantly hampered the potential of our docks as a haven for visiting boaters along the intercoastal waterway. Our proposition is not unprecedented. 770 free docks in towns from North Carolina to the Keys have successfully implemented overnight docking, attracting boaters, fostering economic vitality, and leaving behind dollars and footprints. To address concerns about supervision and security, we propose a temporary suspension of the park closure ordinance for six months. During this period, our police chief can report any issues, providing valuable insight into the viability overnight docking in our community. Beyond snowbird boaters, our local bird boaters from Volusia and Flagler counties present a year-round market for dock users. Currently, many locals refrain from venturing out on the ICW at night due to navigation challenges. By allowing overnight docking, we can encourage them to enjoy our downtown in the evening, filling our local restaurants during dinner hours, particularly during those months when every dollar counts for businesses. Ormond Main Street is ready and eager to take the lead in marketing our city docks to the boating public. We have a dedicated committee prepared to kickstart this initiative with your approval. In conclusion, tonight's discussion is crucial for our community's growth and economic well-being. Let us seize this opportunity to unlock the full potential of our city docks and make Ormond Beach an even more welcoming destination for travelers along the intercoastal waterway. Uh, you might notice in your packet three really nice pictures of our city docks while they're being in use. That, was a, that little junket was organized by my wife and I with fellow boaters from down in Daytona Beach area. And uh, we had 40 people on board those seven vessels, uh, including State Senator Tom Wright and his wife Cindy, who by the way was blown away by how beautiful our docks were. And uh, we all converged on uh, Ormond Garage. So that day, Ormond Garage had 40 more meals that, that certainly added to his bottom line for the day. Thank so you. we hope you will so, certainly consider this. Uh, uh, and uh, thank, thank you very much. Yep, appreciate it, Jerry. Next up is Ike Leary.
Good evening, Mr. Good evening. Mayor, Commissioners, and staff. Uh, 25 years ago this month, uh, the finance director for the city of Mormon Beach, Paul Lane, and the uh, assistant city manager, which I can't recall his name, came down and talked to me. Uh, I had a bait shop in Holly Hill called the Happy Fisherman and asked me if I would come up and take over the bait shop at Chasm Park. Uh, so in the next three days, I, I came up to Ormond. I bought out the guy that had walked out the door. I paid the delinquent taxes that he owed on the sales tax, and in three days, I had it open. That's 25 years ago. I've gone around that corner over 9,000 times. That's a third of my life. Uh, it's uh, for 25 years, I have paid the, the taxes on that property. I have carried the insurance on the bait shop and the flood insurance, okay? In 2020, we had talked about a new bait shop, okay? Uh, now, uh, uh, we had a meeting and we had the concepts and we come up with a concept. Okay, that was 2020. Then we had COVID. The Chasm Park did not have COVID. I don't know why we put it off, okay? It's been three years. Why are we keep kicking the can down the road? Why? See this badge? Thank you. Thank you, Ike. I think it was Tom Lips, but I'll ask Deputy Mayor Tom Bradley. Lips. Okay. <laughs> they was all right. <laughs> Councilman Kent remembers that as well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. All right, uh, next is Sean Anderson. My name is Sean Anderson. I reside at 1267 Scottsdale Drive. I'm a transplant from Pittsburgh. So I'm still dealing with the culture shock. It's been almost 10 years, but I'm still dealing. I've been able to formulate good relationships with our police department. Captain Roos and Lieutenant Larson both. I've also been able to form a good relationship with Sergeant Garner. The last time I was here I misspoke and I put Sergeant Garner in a bad light and that was not my intention and I want to clear that up before I get anything else. I've been dealing with issues with neighbors constantly. It's gotten to the point where I've had to bother the captain and the lieutenant numerous times. And I do mean numerous times. And you should, be, you should know that the captain has gone out of his way numerous times to come outside of the police station and talk with me. Once even during a training exercise. I, was a, I, I believe there was a training exercise going on based upon what I saw. I could be wrong. These are all my perceptions, my perspective. I'm a person that can be corrected when I'm wrong. I'm not one of these people that has to be right all the time. Yesterday, I went into the police station to find out why such a long period of time has passed by since a records request was made, why this was happening. I also did research with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement before I did so. And the same tactics were tried to be used on me. I wasn't going to take them again now that I spoke to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Stephanie Lawson, in the midst of a conversation with another employee, I guess her perception was I was being too loud. She's entitled to that perception. I'm entitled to be a little bit loud if I'm upset. She chose to raise her hand to my face from behind the glass and tell me 
we don't care. We don't care. Captain Ruiz cares. Lieutenant Larson cares. Sergeant Garner cares. This isn't the only incident I've had to deal with with employees. This is not the first time. But every time, that young lady right there, Taylor, has shown me compassion, caring, and understanding, and has treated me like a decent human being. Thank you. Thank Sean. you. Yep. Next is Lindsay Pate. Last but not least. Lindsay Pate, 40 Wildcat Lane. I just wanted to say thank you to the City Commission, um, especially for telling, attending the County um, Council meeting today. Um, Lori was there, Travis, Susan, I know you were, he said, there in spirit. Um, you guys did take your time out of your day and your jobs and other things to attend. Um, Mr. Partington was there too. And I'm grateful that the city maintains a persistent effort in fighting for what's right for the citizens and local businesses. And I think that was an important point to make that it's not just residences that are affected, it's additional businesses like SR Parak. Um, so I'm thankful for that and I haven't lost hope and I am also thankful for um, Troy being so vocal and supporting our area too. And uh, I haven't lost faith in what you guys are gonna be able to do even though it's really not your hot potato as some other councilmen were saying, it's not but I know that you'll continue to do what's right for us. And I'm just grateful that you guys are making the effort in every which way. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Commission, uh, the approval of the minutes. This is item six on the agenda, 6A, from January 23rd, 2024. They've been sent to the commission for review, also posted to the city's website. I don't have- uh, Mr. Mayor, I move approval. Second. Second. Perfect. All those in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Oppose like sign. We'll show those passing unanimously. And that brings us to docket number or agenda number seven, our consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull any item from the consent agenda? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull item G and M. I move approval of the consent agenda min minus items G and M. Second. Moved and seconded. Please call the vote. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7G. Resolution number 2024-17, a resolution accepting a proposal from Barnes, Furlan, and Associates, Inc., for professional services regarding additional work associated with the preparation of a consumptive use permit modification and renewal, authorizing the execution of a work authorization and payment therefore and setting forth an effective date. This is resolution number 2024-17 read by title only. Thank you. If I can get a, a motion and a second for discussion. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Commissioner Sargent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want clarification that this is gonna include the future um, development at Ormond Crossing, Hunters Ridge, and Avalon Park. Is that all gonna be included within this so that we're not coming back for an additional down the road? This is one of the things that, we, that we've been working on with this one for a long time. Um, we started the process for this early on, knowing that we had a, had a renewal. We wanted to do our best to make sure that we represented those, those developments that were coming online. Foreman Crossings and Hunters Bridge are obviously ones that we know quite a bit about what we know we're getting at. We've been working for these past two or three years to try and do our best to, to provide what we know about or, um, the Avalon development. So to the best of our knowledge, yes, it inc includes everything that we expect um, and that we all the information that we have on those developments. So it should reflect that. And that's that's one of the reasons why we're, we're, we're working on this one to make sure that we can get as good of a of a withdrawal for the future to be able to not have to come back and um, modify this anytime in the next 20 years. Right. Thank you. 
great. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Please call the vote. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. 7M. Disposition item titled Auto Renewal Contracts for Miscellaneous Crafts and Trades Services as Needed. All right, I just need a motion and a second for discussion. So moved. Second. S moved and seconded. Commissioner Sargent. I just have a couple questions on this. Um, AAT Roofing is, is in this renewal, and they're the ones that gave us the estimate on the Bailey Riverfront Bridge roof, but they did not bid on the project. So I don't know if we ever got an answer of why they did not bid on that project, but I'm just kind of curious as we're renewing them to to be a part of this, just if we don't need or got any additional information on that. So I can't I can't answer to the fact of why they didn't bid on the project, um, just because I wasn't a part of the Bailey, ba Bailey River Bridge roof project. But um, AAT has worked with us for many years and has been very responsive for small projects um, that we have throughout the, the city. So again, this is this um, is for mis miscellaneous crafts and trades. So um, it's relatively small projects that we utilize our R and R uh, dollars with. So if we have the small roof repairs and stuff like that, they come out, they will repair those, and then go on. They've been very responsive for us. Um, and still provide a good service. Thank you. I have one more question, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, when we include their insurance uh, documents or certificate of insurance um, in these packets, can we include the updated insurance? Like uh, in this packet here, it's from 2014, 2015, so it's an expired policy of about nine years. Um, I mean, how do we know that? I'm sure we have insurance on file, but I just look at this. You want us to approve something with outdated insurance? Yeah. W w Yes, so we can include it for now on. We do actually have those on file. We keep those in a folder. These are the original contracts that, um, you know, without, they probably just didn't add those attachments from the prior years. But we'll make sure that. I understand that, we but when those. we have a packet before us to approve and it has old insurance, I just yes, sir. like current information so I can know what I'm looking at. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's Thank all I have. You. All right. Any other questions or comments on 7M? Please call the vote. Commissioner Persis? Yes. Commissioner Briley? Yes. Commissioner Tolland? Yes. Commissioner Sargent? Yes. Mayor Partington? Yes. And now would be the appropriate time if any commissioners wish to comment on any consent agenda items. Commissioner Persis? Yes. I just want to mention that I'm always pleased to see how we are supporting our first responders, getting them new vehicles and getting them new equipment. It always makes my day. Thank you. Anyone else? I wanted to talk just for a second about 7K, uh, kind of a boring topic. Construction and demolition franchise renewal for Creech Enterprises Incorporated. I just wanted to thank Creech Enterprises for uh, doing business in the city of Ormond Beach the appropriate way. I know uh, after our last meeting on the 23rd, I think it was, uh, I had gotten a complaint regarding a garbage issue and went to an area to check out and we had we had another renewal uh, or actually a new application for a demolition franchise removal from a different company and I noticed in that renewal item it listed the five or six companies who are authorized to do business in the city uh, and and they pay a substantial fee for that as well as uh, other taxes into the the general fund when I went to check on this other unrelated garbage complaint I noticed a company that's not licensed to do uh, business in the city and then just the other day I saw another one of their dumpsters on a, on a property and so I almost pulled this because it didn't seem fair that we're charging some but then anybody can come and use a dumpster in the city where they don't have to pay those substantial fees and taxes. So why are we charging Creech when uh, this other company, and I've, I've given these to the city manager, I guess they're looking into them, I haven't heard back, but it just seemed like a, uh, a fairness issue, and there could be several more, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but these are the two I see with my own eyes on my way home, <laughs> way home from work every day, and it came to my attention when I was looking into that other issue. So I just wanted to 
put that on the radar and uh, hopefully I'll hear back from the city manager and won't have to bring it up again but it really does seem like a, a fairness issue because the companies who don't follow the rules are able to offer a substantial discount to wherever they're putting these dumpsters within our city and then the city's not getting those revenues and that increases taxes for our residents the wear and tear on the road goes unaddressed uh, because those dollars aren't coming in to pay for that and uh, I think it's important uh, that we're everybody has a, a, a level and fair playing field so Joyce if you need pictures I did stop on those two and take pictures because it was easy for me on the way home the others that I've heard about three or four locations I haven't gone to and checked out yet because I really don't feel like it's my job to be a code enforcement person but uh, I'll wait I'll wait to hear back from you before we do anything else with that and that's that's all I had anyone else on the consent agenda I just like to make a comment on H I noticed that um, the grind is the um, made the we accepted them for providing food at the um, PAC I think it's wonderful that we're keeping it local you know we're using our local restaurants with that so I just wanted to make a special note of that great thank you and uh, we'll go to reports suggestions and requests and tonight we start with city manager Joyce Shanahan thank you, Mr. Mayor. of course we'll uh, love to have your pictures and we'll be more proactive in looking at those that don't have the appropriate uh, licensure because it, we do need to level the, the playing field um, upcoming commission meetings February 20th March 5th at 6 p.m. is going to be at Calvary Christian and that's is that a, is that a regular business there too? Yes. we're gonna do regular business and then I think that's the Tomoka Oaks that's February 20th and March 5th. no Just March 5th, 5th. Okay. your next meeting is February 20th um, Upcoming workshops um, on strategic uh, planning items, including uh, 56 North Beach Street. We'd like to have a workshop on that to make sure we're all on the same page of where we're going with that. Um, the EOC uh, is, you know, percolating out there in the River Bend property. So these, I'm not going to do them all in one workshop, but I'm just letting you know what we think is out there, and, and we'll reach out to you to schedule that. If you could possibly look at your calendars for March 20th, April 2nd, and April 16th for um, a probably a for each item. So I think we could probably start at 5:30 and then go to 6:30. What were those dates again? March 19th, um, April 6th. I'll send them out to you. March 20th, April 2nd, and April 16th. So we'll send you a note about that. Um, I wanted to let you know that the city of Ormond Beach was one of um, only 44 of 400 cities that completed the uh, Florida League of Cities City Stat Survey. Uh, they sent a survey to all 411 cities throughout the state, and it's a source of information that league uh, members use and the league's advocacy and education staff use. So I want to thank Kelly McGuire because she normally prepares that. It includes all of our financial information and whatnot. So kudos to staff for that. US-1 interchange update. FDOT has completed the PD&E for this project and their consultant RS&H has begun work on the design phase of the project. Woohoo! In addition to improvements to I-95 interchange at US-1 in Ormond, in Ormond Beach, approximately one mile of this segment of US-1 between Plantation Oaks Boulevard and Broadway Avenue and destination Daytona will be widened from two lanes in each direction to three. This widening includes the addition of shared use paths to serve bicycles, pedestrians, and other users. A1A construction update. City staff participated in the final inspection of the FDOT uh, project last week. The contractor is finalizing the installation of in-pavement lighting at each of the raised crosswalks. A grand opening event is being coordinated with FDOT upon final completion. Um, engineering and the PIO's office are working with FDOT to coordinate that and we'll let you know when that's gonna happen. 
the Andy Romano Beachfront Seawall uh, Universal Engineering is completing their geotechnical testing of the soil behind the existing wall at the base of the wall. Upon completion of this testing, the structural engineer will use these validated results to complete their design. City staff is also working with Volusia County to coordinate timing of bidding and construction of the work. I know that they met with Jessica Fentress to talk about um, turtles and turtle season and some exemptions that may be available to the city for that. So we're excited about that. Um, oh, look at that. I have, uh, I have a second. I um, leisure services, you know, they have a full uh, host of activities. Uh, yoga at the Environmental Discovery will be uh, on Thursday, February 8th. Uh, we're time to start the 2024 Mayor's Health and Fitness Challenge kickoff. Way, way, way great stuff. Saturday, February 10th from 9 to 11. Um, where is that going to be held, Robert? Usually South Orange. South Orange? Yeah, it doesn't say on here. Okay. Um, once upon a story time, come join us on February um, 13th in the North Lawn of the Casements for our Once Upon a Story Time. Children ages four and under can enjoy a short story and an appropriate craft. Um, the tickets are limited. I believe the tickets are free. Is that correct, Robert? The ticket you have to—it's a ticketed event, but is wildly popular. Uh, Siobhan uh, came up with that concept for that program, and it's just just great um, the great backyard birth bird count this is always exciting they do that uh, every year nice. and it just happens to be on my birthday I'm so excited <laughs> February 17th woohoo at the environmental discovery center uh, so please come and join us um, I don't see a time but we'll let you know um, Victor Wainwright to perform at the PAC Victor Wainwright and the train, a Grammy nominated jazz musician, will be the first performance at the newly renovated Ormond Beach Performing Arts Center on Saturday, February 17th. Again, my birthday, just so everybody knows. <laughs> and I really hate celebrating my birthday, so I'm just teasing. Um, so please uh, come and join us for that event. It, reserved seating is $50, and VIP seating is $75. If you have, we're going to have a grand opening. I think you saw the schedule in the, in the newspaper. But the really exciting thing is we got new theater seats. When um, the Regal Cinema was going out, uh, we got those seats. So they're nice kind of quality seats. They're not like the old ones. So we're excited about that. And the Performing Arts Center will be open for tours on Sunday, February 18th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please come and, and see the new inside and enjoy a sampling of of the new performing arts concessionaire and I think there'll be uh, performances throughout the day so you won't miss that so uh, lots of things going on um, if I want to congratulate Susan for her certified municipal clerk that's a lot of hours of extra hours outside of her um, normal duties and uh, she did it in record time it usually takes three or four years to do that so um, she's really done an amazing job and I think Taylor is on that path now as well is that correct very exciting um, Susan does a great job as our clerk but she's a great leader as well she does an amazing job with her staff and finds opportunities for them to blossom and flourish and continue their education so kudos to you um, I'm really proud of you and I'm happy to answer any questions the Commission may have Thank you. Any questions for Joyce? Joyce, I just wanted to check the March date. You said the 20th is a Wednesday. It's the 19th. Oh, 19th. That makes more sense. Yep. Because I knew My we, bad. I thought we tried to do them the same time as commission nights. Yep. Just for convenience for My everybody scheduling-wise. All right. March 19th and April 2nd. April 2nd and April 16th. April 2nd is on. Great. Uh, Assistant City Manager Claire Whitley. Good evening. I'll just follow up on the roll-off issue. Um, so Public Works has coordinated with the Building Department, Planning and Building Department, so that they're adding that to their checklist when they go out and do inspections. So they will just add it to their checklist to check the uh, provider of the dumpster and make sure they're on our compliance list okay. as a franchise. Um, and then also we have made contact with the company you referenced um, and gave them information on becoming compliant. So we'll follow up with them since they've not removed great. those at other locations as well. Have a great night. Thank you. Uh, 
City Attorney, not Randy Hayes, Deputy City <laughs> Attorney, and Margaret. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Yep, thanks for filling in. And tonight we start with Commissioner Tolland. Mm. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much. <laughs> So uh, I guess original, uh, first of all, I just want to say congratulations, Susan. I am, we, uh, we all are very proud of you and you do keep us in line. So thank you very much. And Taylor, I'm really glad that you're starting that program as well. You've got a great mentor there. So if you're, if you're half as good as she is now, you're, you're doing awesome. Um, I guess I'm going to bore you all in because all of you have attended these and I won't make a whole lot of comments about whatever, but it's been a busy beginning of our year. Seems that everybody's having their annual meeting. So um, most of us have attended the Ormond Beach Chamber an annual meeting. Um, there was a Daytona Beach Chamber annual meeting where we were treated with Brian Kelly, um, a little, some music and some discussion. Um, Granada Grand Main Street had a fabulous art show this past weekend. Daytona Beach Mayor's Gala celebrated the second um, big event for First Stop Shelter, and I'll let Susan elaborate on that. And um, of course, um, County Council meeting this morning, which I will elaborate a little bit more in a moment. And Florida League of Cities Legislative Days. Um, I just want, I appreciate the ability to go to these, um, legislative meetings um, and advocate um, for items for our cities. Um, but this year we, we really put an emphasis on thanking our legislators for being very good to us in the in most recently last year when we almost we received almost nine million dollar infusion into our city. So it was more of a, a meeting of gratitude and learning. Um, and we're very thankful for all of our friends in Tallahassee specifically, um, Representative Leake. So now to the meat of a couple things. Um, Mr. Simmons, you heard this morning, uh, this ap I'm sorry, it's been a long day. Mr. S um, Simmons rep came and talked to us about the banner towing. And I just wanna let the commission know that I did talk to Mr. Simmons, I think it was before Christmas. He um, asked me about it and he was very interested and I have referred him um, to staff to reach out to them. So I've, I've had some conversation um, with staff and they will be reaching out to him um, regarding the banner towing company. Um, let's talk about the docks. Also around Christmas, um, I had a meeting with um, Mr. Gennaro. Um, he's very compelling with what he's want. He's been working very hard um, for the last 10 years. It is a Main Street initiative. Um, I personally believe that the docking trial is a worthwhile um, thing to think about. Um, but what I would like to do is ask staff to discuss and bring back to the commission some of the pros and cons at a city level um, and, the and when would the timing of this work best for us. For example, should we consider this after the Casson Park is redesigned and work it into to that? Um, how would it look now? Or, and how would it look if, if the park was redesigned and there was electricity down the docks? And then all the security um, issues as well and involve our police for all of those questions as well. Um, I do believe that this could assist with the vitality of our downtown and it would bring another element to showcase our city. So uh, it's all about timing, right? And I think that maybe um, this is something I personally would like staff to talk about and maybe bring back to us what their thoughts on it as well. And as we're talking about this, Casson Park, I didn't know Ike was gonna come up here and talk again. And he's right. We, we have been putting this project off for a c good couple years that I know of. And I have to say when last meeting, when Mr. Finley came up and said the project is at 60% to come back to us, I was a little surprised because I thought we were further down the road. So um, I too am curious, you know, um, what, 
what 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 are we waiting for and maybe Joyce you can help me what are we waiting for and what is a good timeline for us to move forward so we can discuss some of these things that are kind of like flying in the wind well we're waiting for the engineer to give us the drawings and Sean can speak to specifically um, that particular part of the process and then I'll discuss the other issues we've received the 60 percent plans and so we've got a meeting with Zepcon Associates, Dwight Duran, on this Thursday to, to go over those plans. One of the things that he's preparing to do is to submit to SPRC, which is our Site Plan Review Committee. That project, like every single other project that we do, goes through the same process, procedures that we make our, our developers go through. So um, I apologize if it, if it seems that this is getting kicked on the road. It's just it is there is a very um, lengthy process to go into this. There are it's not just putting lines on there to to do the, the the parking lot and building we've got to do the plans for things like utilities expansion and for for stormwater calculations there was an issue with a um a, a easement on that was fdot and so they had to work some of those things out so this is the, this is kind of the tricky part of it where where we don't have a lot of flash we're taking that flashy one and we're doing the engineered plans for it to make it to make it buildable so it's the it's the engineering part that's the 60 percent i because i was under the impression that you know that was done when we saw the, the little picture of it but i didn't un understand it was the engineering part I so i apologize no, I that apologize. i didn't understand that that was the conceptual plan which which conceptual gets, it, plans gets, complete engineering plan is the conceptual plan is, is what we what we had gone brought back to a couple of times that right. we had finalized um, what we're looking to is we've got that 60% plans, which are 60% engineered plans. They're, those are the, the, the bid document plans that, that we would put out there on the street that someone would construct to. So th it, there's a little bit of, of as an engineer, there, there, there's a work that, it, that needs to be done taking it from a planner. Sometimes okay. planners talk, use, use fat pens where engineers use thin pencils, if that makes sense. Trying to make it a, take a pretty picture and yeah. make, it an, a, make it something that's constructible from a geometric standpoint, make sure that the utilities all line up with one another and, and do that. So that, that's where we're at right now. It's, it's, it's at that little bit of a long, long lead time to get it done. Once we get this done, once we get it to, to, to the site plan review committee following that procedure, there will be some comments that Stephen will make, that, that Carol will make to make sure that, that, that it meets the code as well. We want to make sure that we are, we're, that our products are doing everything that we ask other people to do. And so there will be a, some, some modifications based on that. We're, we're in the home stretch now. Okay. You know, we, we took a little bit longer with this one. This is maybe our model project of how we do public outreach. And so we took a little bit longer with that. I, 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 you know, if, if there's a fault in doing that, I'll take the fault in that. But yeah. I want to make sure that everybody's, every community was represented and we got the product that we had talked about is for this being a generational project. I just need a clarification sure. where the 60% came from. I really honestly thought that we were farther down the road yeah. as well. And I wasn't under, I didn't understand why we were dragging our feet. It felt like we were dragging our feet. I apologize I'll, for that. I'll do a better job with you. No, that's that's fine. Thank you. And and just one more thing. I know I talk a lot, but there's a lot there's a lot going on in my brain. Um, I just uh, regarding this morning. I I just want to say a couple things. First of all, I am extremely proud of Councilman Kent in his advocacy for Ormond Beach. His commitment was right on. He verbalized exactly what needed to be said, that it is in the county, it's a county situation. And he reiterated multiple times that Orman stated that we had no desire to annex or provide utilities. And I was very proud of him for standing tall. And I was actually proud of, of Jeff Brower as well for seconding it. He did a fabulous job trying to convince the other councilmen as well i also was extremely proud of our residents we do have really smart residents they really hold us to task you know and i guess what i want them to know from me especially is just my reaffirmation to my commitment to continue the fight along with you you know we are the residents with you and we will continue to fight and i appreciate what you said at the beginning of the me meeting mayor very much on the other flip side, I am extremely, as Councilman Kent would say, wildly disappointed in five of the councilmen this today. I was actually shocked. 
I was surprised and it really took me back. Um, citing not wanting to have to increase taxes as a, as a reason for not wanting to protect the residents, I thought was really lame. And saying that um, letting it go to site plan for review as the best tool for us, I thought was pretty short-sighted. So I just wanted to publicly say that I'm very disappointed in them. Um, but I also know that every door that closes, there's always an open door. And I see that there's still a lot of opportunity, opportunity for us to continue to fight. And I'm sure we will. So thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you, Commissioner. And Commission, um, I agree with Ormond Main Street's uh, position, Mr. Gennaro's presentation tonight. I think Commissioner Tolland had a good point about staff bringing it back to us, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I didn't know how the rest of the commission felt and also if we could get an estimate, if, if the commission agrees <clears throat> on how quick staff can get that back to us. Yeah. Commissioner Persons. Yes, I'm in agreement also. My, the only thing I would want to know, and I think this is just for the citizens' well-being, is just as far as who would monitor the boats, you know, each day, because it would be a one night from what I understand. I think that's what you said. And um, as far as any crime, what would happen? It would be like, are you going to be there at your own risk? You know, th those are two things that just came to my mind right away. But I think it's a great idea. I love it. So, Commissioner Sorge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's a great idea. Um, Mr. Michael Gentry, about a, probably a month and a half or, or so ago, sent me a text of a really cool boat. I think it was like an old tugboat that came from up north. They were coming through, docked there, went over and ate at our restaurants, and then they got back in their boat, I believe, and went to stay at the harbor down in Daytona Beach. But they came, enjoyed our restaurants, probably would have stayed if that was an opportunity for them, um, spent money in Ormond, and then and left. So I think it's a, I mean, that's just one, one of the stories that I think was successful, and, and I think there's a lot more that could, could be done. Thank you. Thank you. And Joyce, how soon do you think you can get that? Well, we have to amend the ordinance because the ordinance does not allow uh, overnight docking. So I have to talk to the city attorney's office, but I don't think I could have that to you before the next meeting. So I would say, um, where are we at now? Um, maybe try for the first meeting in March. I'll be too close, maybe. Oh, dear. How about the 19th? Second meeting in March? Yeah. If the commission's okay with that. That's quicker than I thought, so. Yeah. Well, we aim to please. <laughs> <laughs> We're not always successful, but we do aim to please. Thank you. Yep. And anything else, Commissioner Tolland? No, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sargent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I won't rehash uh, what Commissioner Tolland said on a lot of things, but um, touch on a few things. The seats at the PAC were donated by Mr. Holub, who bought the Regal and then donated them to, the, um, I believe, his daughter to perform at the PAC, so that was one reason. So that was a great donation by him. Um, talk about that. To touch on Tallahassee, we are very fortunate to have Representative Leak's leadership um, as the appropriation chair. Warren Beach hasn't had that since the 1986, I believe, with Sam Bell. So it's um, we're very fortunate. He brought back, well, we were awarded $9.5 million last year, which those, those don't happen all the time. Why can't I say it? <laughs> it's fine. We become um, a target when we get all that kind of money. Well, Jarlene, please don't publish that. <laughs> um, uh, Riverbend Golf Course, um, are we going to be able to move that fence in, or are we waiting until a workshop, or what's the status on that? Yeah, we can do that. Thank you. I saw that it was cleaned up. Um, I do appreciate, I got a text yesterday morning from a resident that said, wow, the mulch looks really good. So I don't know if Yellowstone got the hint or if um, staff did something, but whatever it was, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, that's far we're good. Um, the airport, thank you to Stephen um, and Brian for showing me around the tower yesterday. Um, I learned a lot about the airport, then I went over and, and went inside the airport. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of potential there. 
there's a lot of potential there, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. As um, far as code enforcement, weeds, um, buildings that need to be painted, updated. Um, it's very hard if you fly in here to see where the FBO is. It just says Sunrise Aviation. You don't even see FBO on there. I mean, there's one sign that says FBO on the ground. It's just very um, complicated out there, and, and there's so much potential, but I think we got to tap into it. And, you know, that there's an economic driver. I think it brings, what, like $56 million um, to our city, roughly. Um, and I encourage anyone to go out there and just drive around and, and view it. You'll see that it's um, it's got a lot of potential, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, I think that's it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And I I agree with you. I'm not exactly sure of the word, if it's old-fashioned or uh, the signage when you fly in to our airport is almost non-existent. Uh, things look a little run down, faded. Um, they do have some nice new signage around the outside of it, but uh, like you said, knowing you know where do you go to get fuel, where do you go to find the FBO, if you're flying in and you're not familiar with the layout, it's, it's a problem, so. All right, Commissioner Persis. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. Um, I have a few announcements that I'd like to make. First of all, I, I want to congratulate Susan for getting your award, being a certified, certified municipal clerk. It's amazing. And Taylor, following right in her footsteps, we're very, very, very proud of you. It's wonderful to see people getting an education, moving on. I think that always inspires me. So congratulations again to both of you. Um, uh, I guess it was Saturday night. Um, I think we were all at the mayor's gala uh, at the... Uh, gosh, where, where was it? It was at the Hilton. It was the Hilton. It was a great night. Um, I think I am on the board of the First Step Shelter, and I represent Ormond Beach on that board. Um, it's wonderful. It was wonderful to be there. I know the, the event was highly successful. The city gives the shelter, I think it's 30000 30, 36000 Is that right, um, Ms. Shanahan, I think that's what it is every year, and other cities in, or in Volusia County do that as well. And it's just something that really helps people get back on their feet. They are 90% successful with the people that um, come in, and 90% of them are able to go out and live on their own. So it's, it's a wonderful um, venture, and I'm just so proud that we are involved with it. So it, it was a great evening. Uh, I also attended legislative action days, and I appreciate being able to go as well. Thank you, Ms. Shanahan, for allowing that. And it was wonderful going to see um, Representative uh, Senator Wright and Representative League and, and thanking both of them for all they do for us, because whether it's in money or with words, they always support us, and that's just a great feeling. And one thing I did that's not in Ormond Beach, but it was very, very interesting, and I urge all of you to go, is to go to the Museum of Arts and Sciences in Daytona and go see the new Megalodon exhibit. It is so amazing. And um, the, the lawyer dude, which I'm sure you know who the lawyer dude is. <laughs> we all know who he is. We know and love him. But he is he was, um, you know, he really helped get that there as long as, as long as along with the museum folks too but it is amazing it's so educational for young people and for adults as well if you like sharks if you like fishing if you like all of that kind of stuff you have to go it's just so so awesome and finally um, I just want to say that um, I was able to attend the Daytona Beach Chamber annual meeting and the treat of course was seeing Brian Kelly and Lori and I were right up there in the front, you know, kind of dancing to some of his new songs that he's getting ready to drop out right now. But it was very meaningful to me to see him there come back to his home which that he loves. You know, one of his songs is, you know, I was born in Ormond Beach. It starts like that. And it's so, it just makes you so happy. Um, he actually lived across the street from me for a while where I live right now. So my kids grew up with him, so I, I know him well, and it was, he really truly cares about our city and cares about people here. So I just wanted to end with that good note. So thank you for listening, and have a good evening. Thank you. Commissioner Deputy Mayor Briley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I'll be brief. Uh, 
and not go over the events that we had with with uh, the Commissioner Tallon and Commissioner Person spoke of. Uh, I do want to just take my opportunity to congratulate Susan on your municipal clerk certification. That is fantastic. Congratulations. And, and Taylor, we're so proud of you for doing that. Good luck with that program. You'll do us proud, I'm sure. Um, touching on one thing Commissioner Sargent brought up was uh, the Performing Arts Center and the, and the seats that were there. Those, as, as Commissioner Sargent said, were donated by uh, or were a gift from Paul Holub from the uh, Regal Cinema. The Regal Cinema, I guess, was a, probably a little, a little bit of trouble before COVID, and COVID really kind of put them out of business, but they were getting ready to rehabilitate that, that 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 theater so those those seats were brand new I mean they were still had shrink wrap around the seats so that was a very nice gift from Mr. Holland uh, I'll end the evening with just saying um, I agree with Commissioner Tallon and, and some of the other comments that were made I am uh, very proud and uh, I think this community is honored to have Troy Kent as our county council representative in Volusia County uh, and at the same time I'm very very disappointed with the the actions of the county council today I think they dropped the ball and uh, I don't think they took a very good leadership position as, as their role. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I'll say goodnight. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. And Joyce, did you have an estimate on the completion for A1A at all? No idea. My understanding is that the in pavement lighting, which is one of the things we had talked about, I think in the past, um, to bring extra attention to the people, those crosswalks are being installed this week, and that's the final piece. And so, I think that once they've got that done, DOT wants to do because because there are so many of those crosswalks, they want to do one of those Saturday events that they do, kind of like when TPO comes out and does the bike bike helmet fittings. They want to do one of those things, um, I believe, at at Andy Romano or more likely at Rockefeller where they've got the, 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 the big um, hybrid beacon to get people to just kind of a, a little bit of a, it's here, this is what we're doing. They, they probably want to take some photos for, the, for themselves. This has really been a great project because it got us everything that we asked for. We got those seven crosswalks going across there. And so they want to make sure that the word out to, to get people to use them correctly. We'll, so we'll reach out to them and see if we can get a specific date. And Sean, don't go too far. So. We can tell folks approximately if we're lucky maybe end of march early april something like that i think that's i'm thinking more most likely march i don't think it'll be yet in february i was hoping that it was in february but i think that if we i think that most likely in march but as soon as we get a date we're going to make sure that everybody knows about it because i think that it's something that we want to we want to participate in and we want to promote it to everybody so um jen and pauline have been working with um dot's pio to make sure that we kind of coordinate that and get and get our, our are able to help them promote it as well as we can great and then follow up final uh <clears throat> the speed limit will return to 35 when they're done or is it going to remain at 30? It, 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 it's permanent to 30. okay good so i, I think that they, they they've narrowed there one of the things that was with this in order to get the medians in there there was a narrowing of, of the lanes and that that precipitated the the narrow the, the lowering the speed limit um we still have the two lanes to go go through there I think that it's a, a a good safety measure that they did to help help make it facilitate so people are able to cross safely. Okay, and I'll let I was asked by a couple of people that's why I asked, so I'll let them know. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, just Sean, and you may know. <clears throat> excuse me. Does DOT plan on taking this safety or this type of road program further south into Daytona? They they do. Yeah, I think that, okay. that that's one of the things that they're working on. We've got the, the, the project that follows behind this that's going to be North A1A. Right. That was one that I think that we were a little bit more surprised about, that it was came, uh, came upon us as quickly as it did. Mm -hmm. That one's going to end up being mostly dealing with, with crosswalks as well. Right. Um, but we're getting them at those at Standish, Amsden, and, and Ruston, and which Ruston. Were, the, were yeah. the big three that we were pushing for. Okay. So we're going to get, it's going to go all the way up to just south of Crotty Park, which I, I know that it had the original project on North A1A went into that but what the DOT has shared with me is that they have another project that comes behind that that, that, that picks it up and takes it through the rest of the project that's that and, and south I believe they are going to continue it in day through Daytona Beach from you know we, we kind of stop at Harvard which is right because I think that's just is, like, this is Andy Romano. so we've got um, Millsap which is just north of Andy Romano right. we have Andy Romano we've got the light at Harvard which so, so we're pretty good all the way through through our South City limits 
they're going to take it beyond that in, in Daytona Beach through Bel Air and, and further south to tie it into the work that they're doing as part of that Orange Avenue work that um, in Daytona Beach. Because I think this pretty much was the gist of that 2016 safety, that corridor safety study, was it not? That was this was a big part of it. The, yeah. the, it started it started in Daytona Beach. I remember going to a meeting down at the Schnebley Center, which I think was part of mm -hmm. the, the kind of the south limits of it. Right. We went all the way and we walked most of the way up to where the old Happy Whale is right. or was. So all the way into 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 Flagler Beach. So it, it really takes that whole corridor and 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 makes it what what I think a lot of people have wanted to see for a long time. Access for the people who live there and, and work there to be able to access the, the, the beach for, 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 for from a safe standpoint. Thank you. All right. Uh, the mayor's gala Saturday night was fantastic. It's the second annual, and I haven't heard a number yet as far as how much they raised, but uh, First Step Shelter is probably the best example of what we can accomplish when we work together as far as all the east side cities. Uh, it took a long time, a lot of work, uh, but it finally came together. And I think the number, Commissioner Persis, is closer to 90,000 that we uh, contribute to the yeah, per year to the First Step Shelter. It's expensive, and honestly, uh, there's no way around that. Uh, we pay the premium, I think, because we want to cooperate with our fellow cities. There's no other real resource for the homeless in our area, so it's the only game in town from that perspective. The way they run that shelter, you could give a lecture on it. It's so smart. Uh, and honestly, participating in that gives us options should the Florida legislature approve a uh, no camping in public ordinance. I know Senator Martin is working on that. I talked to the mayor of Altamont Springs, Pat Bates. They're working on an ordinance as well. The, again, the point is not to punish the homeless, but rather to get them help uh, and get them out of a terrible situation. Um, but being a part of the homeless shelter is a key component of that, and that's why we, that's why we cooperate, um, and we'll see how that We'll see how that goes in a couple weeks here, whether it makes it through the through the legislature and, and whether the governor signs it or not. Uh, I wanted to bring to your attention a letter I got from Lawrence uh, Bennett. It's an invitation to Mary Bryant Barr's uh, God's Little Angels, recognizing 35 years of service to Volusia County's seniors, family, and children also the sick, shut-ins, and school families. It's an open house on February 10th, 2024, from 1 to 7 uh, at the Speedway, uh, or in that area. I'm not exactly sure the way this is worded, but uh, Mary Bars is, is an incredible woman. Uh, it strikes me as more of a Daytona Beach event, but I think she's helped people from all over the area, so I'll ask our clerk to to copy this and, and send it by email to all of you. It just says, Mayor Bill, you and the entire city commission are invited if you care to attend. And it's signed Larry Bennett, who is an Ormond Beach resident. Wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, and then I'll close. You guys covered everything else so well. It has been a busy time. It's always a busy time. Uh, this coming Friday night is the Historical Society's annual meeting. Uh, I think we'll swear them in and, and have a nice evening celebrating all the things that, that they've accomplished in the last year. We're lucky to have them, just like we're lucky to have Main Street. Uh, volunteers largely who do incredible work for our city. And uh, so look forward to attending that with whoever can make it. And then the Mayor's Health, I'll close with the Mayor's Health and Fitness Challenge. That's Saturday morning. Uh, at the South Ormond Neighborhood Center. I love that we start it a little late so that people who uh, didn't get sucked into a gym at the beginning of the year can still uh, get out there and get the exercise that they may need. I also love that uh, it's a few hundred people that participate in it every year. It's not thousands, uh, but it, seeing the people who take it to heart and really excel and make positive improvements in their health 
that's the most exciting part of it. And so, uh, look forward to another round, another round of that. Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, sir, Deputy Mayor. I'm sorry, I, I forgot one thing under under comments. So it's just the first step. Shelter made me think of this. Um, some time back, we had discussed under Commissioner comments about possibly supporting or sponsoring a room at the Barracks of Hope for our homeless uh, veterans, and I didn't know where we might uh, stand with that or if there's. Maybe maybe we put it on an upcoming uh, agenda. I'm not sure we could put it on an agenda. The issue I have with that is there's so many dollars for uh, veterans. There's so much money out there at the federal level for veterans, and then to come to Ormond Beach residents and ask them to give again uh, when you know I don't know if it goes to an Ormond Beach resident who's homeless who needs it or if it goes to anybody, but. Uh, I mean, they are flush. There is no reason for any veteran ever to be homeless. And $25,000 is a big sum of cash. Uh, so, you know, that's that's up to the commission. I was just thinking since our neighboring cities, our sister cities had, had you know, Port Orange, Daytona, Holly Hill, it all contributed. I think a couple. Sponsored rooms. Yeah, a couple have. The Berry, I think. Um, 16 cities in Volusia County. I don't know how many. How many have? And again, I don't know. Does Ormond Beach have anybody there? There's a lot of, a lot of questions. So. Yeah, I wouldn't mind getting more information on it anyway, so we can make an informed I'll decision. I'll be happy to get some more information. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Joyce. And with that, we are adjourned.